Hello, hello, hello. This is your retentacled overlord, GM Starson, and I am here today to talk about the character building for the role-playing game Big Eyes Small Mouth, or BESM to be short. Now, uh, BESM is in its fourth edition and is a role-playing game that is focused on creating the feeling of anime if that makes sense, while still allowing you to choose from all the various genres and styles that might be available. Um, it's a lot more storytelling focused and a lot more fluff focused than it is uh, some of your more uh, hardcore number crunching games. Um, this is no D&D 3.5, that's for sure. So, today, uh, we will be building a example character for a game I will be running soon. And uh, it's going to be a superhero game, um, but we're looking for a lower power level. So, because generally when you're starting with a new system, you don't want to uh, overdo it. Lest you leave your players in a bind where they don't know what they're getting into and how everything works. So, sorry, tentacles froze in there for a moment. Anyways, um, so as a uh, uh, as a base character in this game, we're going slightly above the heroic level to the mythical level, and we'll see how this turns out. Um, one of the example uh, items is a. Uh, uh, a magical girl or an experienced psionic, um, significant supernatural powers. I figure that belongs on the, you know, the, the low-end street-level superhero flavor. So we'll start there. So uh, BESM is a point system. Um, you'll notice that we have uh, a point option um, for this game. We're going to start out at the halfway point between base, mythical, and superhuman at 125. And then we will go from there. So we'll enter in 125. Um, now, it's usually good form to come into these things with a idea already existing. Um, but you don't have to have a character name and a backstory all figured out. Just need an idea of what you want to be. Uh, in this case, I want to uh, create a character that is um, a uh, somebody that sort of fills the uh, the heart of gold healer uh, sort of idea. Um, if you're if you've been watching uh, Talentless Nana, a, a the healing girl's abilities, or someone who through the power of their their faith and love, can heal those around them. There will probably be downsides. <laughs> That's what... And here's a note in general. Flaws are what make characters awesome. Because flaws are what make characters human. Now that can be a personal flaw, it can be a game power flaw, but flaws are always the better choice over just basic. So we've got our character point total. Uh, the GM for this game is our son. And the character, the player name will be Star Sun. Aha. All right. So we're going to uh, begin um, putting uh, important um, information into uh, our character. So, um, since we're in the mythical level, we'll need to keep in mind that uh, these benchmarks are what we are not allowed to go above. So that prevents us from just min-maxing something ridiculous. So we'll keep that in mind. Go to these. 
There we go. That's cuddly. I love soft scenes like that. Now we get to our basics. Um, I intend for my character to be human. However, just for note, uh, in the BESM system, let's see if I can find it real quick here, you can use something called templates to give your hero a sort of standardized race or style where they've already kind of put in most of the uh, the work for it. So, for example, if you want to be an android uh, battle maid, like in Steel Maid, uh, blanking on the name, um, it'll cost you 60 points to have the android battle maid, but then all this will be included with your uh, with your character, so these are all the things that you probably should include when you're um, creating that character. So, but like I said, I want to be regular human for this game. Well, not regular, obviously, superheroes, but that's where we're going to start. Um, so, and you, you start filling out some, some background ideas and what your weaknesses are and your name and things like that. Um, ah, dice rolling, because every RPG player loves clicky-clacky shiny map stones. Um, so, uh, it is a tr uh, tri-stat system with uh, two six-sided dice, possibility to add more or subtract one. Not good on the subtract one. Generally, you want to roll uh, your dice, then add whatever number is appropriate for the action, and then see if that beats what you're aiming for. So if you have a plus three strength and you need to get above a six, then you'll need to at least roll three on your dice to be able to do that. Um, so there is an element of luck, but with only 2d6, it's actually fairly average. You're more likely to get sevens mathematically, after all, um, than you are other extreme numbers, but there is a possibility for that. So, um, we're gonna go ahead, because all these various numbers, uh, don't mean anything if we don't have, uh, Oh, and feel free to pause here. Here's a character quiz to help guide you through what your uh, character uh, should, things you should consider while developing your character. Um, moving along. Got the templates for races. here real quick. Generally, you're considering uh, these templates before you uh, consider much else, because they're going to impact whether or not you can buy more stats, whether or not your stats will be pushed over the limit by purchasing more. Um, again, standard human, so don't need anything uh, different. Alright. So. Um, stats are the numerical assignment for the basic abilities. We use the three stat system in BESM. Body, mind, and soul. Which are fairly self-explanatory. So you start with a value of zero and raise a stat, and raising a stat by one costs two character points. Most characters should have values of at least four in each stat if you want to be at least average human. So out of my uh, 125 
points be a normal human and I'm going to pull up a calculator because I'm not feeling super well and I do not want to try and do math in my head right now. So if we have four in each value, and it costs us two per point, and we have three values, that's 24 of our points gone so far. So we're down to 101 points um, with our starting setup. Four, 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 so that we don't forget that we've spent those points already. Now, we don't want to go overboard with throwing the stats into, or throwing our points into our basic functioning stats, because while it's good to be general all around, it does put limitations on what we can do later. So, uh, There is a special um, section that will cover. Uh... Now, for this character, I I do feel like they should be a little more powerful in soul and heart type abilities. So we're gonna at least throw in um, uh, additional two points to get soul, um, we'll actually throw another two and pull it up to six, significantly above human average. That feels accurately, or accurate, accurate, yeah. Uh, ooh, fun scary angel. Um, next we're moving on to attributes. Um, and we can use the remaining character coin points to buy those attributes. Um, and our modification of an attribute through an enhancement. Uh, and how this works is if I buy an attribute, but I add an enhancement to it, the enhancement doesn't cost me anything, but it forces the... Uh, the ability to function a level lower. So essentially, if you have a one point or level one attribute and you put an enhancement on it, it's not going to function. So it effectively costs more if you want the same uh, abilities um, or your abilities at the same level, but more impressive, which makes sense. You might want to taper down, make your person more jack of all trades but you don't want it to be as powerful so you don't get any refund for adding the enhancements because they do make them more uh, uh, more widespread and more applicable so let's see um, but now enhancements uh, improve it but limiters reduce the ability in some way so, uh, anytime you add a, uh, a limiter to your ability, it doesn't cost anything, but it causes the ability to bump up one level of power. So, uh, moving along, we have a lot of attribute options. That's part of the point. So, <laughs> feel free to pause here and sort of look over this list if uh, you're watching this on YouTube if not and you're on Twitch sorry um, there's nobody here anyways 
So, uh, we are looking at, for my uh, healing uh, soft-hearted character, going to want some, oh, uh, healing, exactly, 96. So we'll go over to page 96. senses heal it. Instantly heal the target's injuries through touch. So at base it will be uh, it will be a uh, a touch oriented ability. So um, level one just lets me heal people. Uh, at, but if I bump it up all the way to level 3, I can uh, bring someone back from the dead, but not really dead. You know, the typical anime scene of, oh my god, you've been killed, and somebody comes up and heals them and says, no, wait, they're not gone yet. Um, so, we're going to... And you can repair massive trauma such as lost limbs or organs at level 5. Now, um, this costs 1 point per level. So, I want my character to be able to heal anyone. So, we're going to start with dropping 6 points into healing. And... Uh, um, so that makes that that's a pretty powerful healing move right there. We've only spent thirty two points. Um, so, now, as I mentioned before, it's our flaws that make things more interesting. So we're going to go through and see uh, what sort of enhancements uh, might be super interesting to add. Ooch passed... We'll, pr we'll have to come back to them later. Um, F, come on. Now, most of them seem to come with basic enhancement choices. So, that is something to keep in mind, as there may be uh, enhancements already existing. What will be weapons, damage types? at least. Okay. Um. Oh, those are only for the weapons. Okay, so this is... They do list um, possible uh, uh, and here's and so here's how we do the customized one. Um, so, I'm not 
looking to make my healing an area effects. Ah, here we go. I definitely want concentration to be a thing. It just makes sense for the character. So, let's see. Um, light concentration may still perform uh, general actions, but cannot perform any combat-related ones. That is definitely something I want. Doing, and we'll mark down Thompson. Uh, concentrate one, um, which will boost the level up to seven. Now, this is really important because you think, well, why can't I just put all sorts of limiters on my ability so that it's narrow but it works the way I want it to. Well, let's go on back over to our handy dandy little uh, uh, our handy dandy little chart here. Sorry guys, I am not feeling well, so this is going a little slower than I would perhaps prefer, but that's life. So, our maximum stat uh, values for Mythical are 12. Maximum attribute level, however, is 6. So, I can't have the... Uh, healing ability bumped up to 7. So, with that in mind, I'm going to need to take a power-up or dial back. Now, since this is a teaching thing, we're going to go with the power-up to bring it back down to 6. I think I jumped too far ahead there. Let's go back. get to defects in a moment that's more broader character character pieces than what we're looking for at the moment which is just a power setup um, okay so. we have to pick a new enhancement so range automatically starts at touch so, if I want my uh, character to be able to heal from a distance, I can add uh, range 1, or range negative 1 perhaps, might be an easier way to notate it. That'll bring me back down to 6. So, that's a fairly easy way of going about it. Um, so, uh, obviously, I've not spent nearly enough character points to fulfill the character, but I'm going to sort of continue along through the line, um, and we'll work more on the uh, character um, and perhaps add other abilities and powers um, later. But right now, I want to uh, select defects. 
Now, defects are disadvantages for your entire character. They're not a disadvantage based on your power. They're a disadvantage of your character as a person. So, um, which I do love the fact that if your defects make it so that uh, you have unused points, you can add them to the unknown power selection, which will cause the uh, which will give the GM the ability to uh, add those points to an unknown power, which will manifest at an appropriate time. Great for storytelling stuff. Um, and uh, it does make sure to take into account that if you've got two forms, that, you know, it's only going to affect one or the other. Uh, if it's something that's inherent to that identity or uh, the way you look or something like that. Um, so, uh, let's see here. Uh, Blind Fury, definitely not. Um, conditional ownership. Um, now, I'm going to say for my campaign world that the government does know about the existence of superpowers and they do regulate it. So I will say in my defect listing... Um, plus six, plus four, and by three is 4.6. No shocker there. And it's uh, plus one per level of the character's attack mastery attributes. I don't have any of that, so. Um, do we round up or round down? I assume round down, but... Rounding down, there we are. So, combat value is still a 4 for attack. Um, and so it'll be the same for my combat defense. I'll probably add some things in later on to boost that up, but, you know. Now we have our health points which is uh, our body stat plus our soul stat, in this case 10, times 5. So 50 HP, which if I remember correctly, falls well below our maximum allowed. And finally, energy points. Um, the, which seems to be a general constitution sort of ability. Um, you can spend a point uh, to get a plus one dice roll for every ten energy points the character burns. So not something you can do willy-nilly. Um, and we get that stat by adding together the mind and soul. So that is also, that's going to be ten. And finally our damage multiplier which starts at 5, and then doesn't really change unless we've taken abilities, it looks like. Then I would share it with the GM, and I'd technically be done if I had actually spent all the points. So, you know, keep in mind, obviously this is the short and sweet version of things, but... This is how you'd uh, how you'd build the character. Um, so uh, there's there's other stuff for actually playing the game, but that's our uh, our basics for setting up a character.
So now, um, 